Coming up in this episode, a preview of the Australian Grand Prix, answering the questions you've been asking. Will Carlos Sainz race this weekend? Who's going to do well at Albert Park? And what's going on with Susie Wolf? All coming up right now. If he continues this way, he's going to be one of the greats. This is Formula One. This is the sport we love. Welcome to F1 Briefings in proud partnership with Sports Illustrated. We're going to jump straight in. It's the Australian Grand Prix this weekend. We're going to be getting up very early because we are based in the UK. But let's talk about Carlos Sainz first of all, because he, well, he had a bad weekend at the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, didn't he? Yeah, so... Right, he missed Saudi Arabian Grand Prix, so he took part in FP1 and FP2, but then before FP3, he was taken off for emergency surgery for appendicitis. First of all, I can't believe he was actually in the car for the first two practice sessions, Insane. but we move on. So Oliver Behrman, the reserve driver, stepped in for him, did a fantastic job. Got yeah, we just, just to pause, we actually talked about him in the last yeah. podcast, so if you want to hear us praise the young man <laughs> go listen yeah so six points on his debut so he obviously did the team proud but that does signs no favors he's quite keen to come back he's had two weeks to recover from his surgery he was actually back at the track just like, uh, over 24 hours after the surgery which was unbelievable slightly insane um but obviously that's not the same as being ready to get back into a race car so he's back in australia but it's still not 100%. Yeah, he's wanting to test it. He's wanting to get into FP1. This is what he said to Autosport in Australia. At the time, it was honestly very difficult to know if it was appendicitis. What I know is on Wednesday, I started to feel really bad in the paddock and I got the typical symptoms of food poisoning. Oh, sorry, mate. I got a very high fever also and I spent Thursday also with those symptoms. But obviously with medication, when I was jumping in the car, I was feeling a lot better because I was getting the medication. But then after those two se uh, sessions, I realized I cannot keep going like this for the whole weekend so if i'm not improving i'll go to the hospital and go to the hospital he did he uh, he continued i didn't improve in the morning of the friday which was qualifying day i went to the hospital and i got diagnosed with appendicitis which was not easy to diagnose because my analysis and the test that they were doing it was not clear so i didn't have the typical symptoms of appendicitis but they were pretty convinced it could be and i got the surgery done it was a great job from the doctors because as soon as I got it removed, I felt back to normal, back to better, obviously with surgery, and I could start focusing on recovering. Now, also talking to um, talking to, to uh, ESPN, no, it was Autosport where I saw it. We've got another quote from ESPN coming up, but Autosport, he talked to Autosport and he said how he's just going to do his best. He feels like he's up to racing. So the question is, will he be back? What do you think? Well, he'll be back in free practice because... <laughs> they're gonna throw him in the car and give it a go <laughs> but he does need to obviously do those practice sessions see how he feels and if he's comfortable obviously there are intense g-forces that he's gonna have to deal with it's, it's a not... fast track as well isn't it yeah so there's gonna be a lot for his body to handle also the fia have to pass him um so they do their own medical checks and have to pass him as well so yes he'll be in free practice it's hard to say, really. I personally think he will be back. Yeah, I do Because too. these drivers are like superhumans. <laughs> they are. I've always said they are peak human. Yeah. Like, these guys are the best of the best. And the thing is with Carlos Sainz is that he hasn't got a seat to go into mm. at the end of this season. He needs to show that he's willing to literally, will, like, he, he's willing to do everything and risk his life. I'm being dramatic, <laughs> but literally risk his life for driving for F1. Mm. And he's, so far, he's doing a great job. He's got to be careful, though, because, you know, if something goes wrong again, it's only going to set him back. So it needs to be the right time. But obviously, he doesn't want to wait around for too long, especially as Ollie Behrman did such a great job. That's just another person who's wanting a seat next year. So mm. it's all competition. Yeah, and he did really, really well. And I'm sure Science is thinking, OK, he showed blatant... <laughs> blatant talent what if he's actually pretty good he goes, he, and you know what if his performance i doubt it'll happen but what if his performance in saudi arabia and in australia this weekend actually looks 
as good as or almost as good as him mm. i doubt it I doubt Carlos it, is a great, still great driver, but it's something yeah. that's surely going through his mind. Now, this is what he said to ESPN. Just by seeing me move in the exercises that I'm doing in the gym, this tells me I'm fit to jump into the car tomorrow and try. But obviously, I'm not stupid, and if I don't feel good tomorrow, I will be the first one to raise my hand and say that I need another two weeks to the next race, which is in Japan. This, together with the FIA, is also the plan that we have in place. I have another check with the FIA tomorrow. They are monitoring my progress. I'm the first one that doesn't want to be in pain or to suffer. Well, yeah. Uh, to make it any worse, I'm not stupid and I'll be very clear with how I'm feeling and everything. Like you said, Ollie Behrman is theirs. Formula 2 and Formula 3 on the same weekend. We'll get into that and how that affects the race later on in, this, uh, in the show. But Ollie Behrman is there. He's He's got to be thinking, come on. I'm wishing Carlos the best, but... Just take it easy. Have another week off, mate. Mm. Just to have another week. Lay in bed. Enjoy the F1 from the TV. Don't you think, though, on the other side of it, he did so well in Saudi Arabia that he has already proved himself to other teams that he is someone to, someone to consider for next year. He's also got his Formula 2 championship that he's currently competing in. So, Which he's at the bottom of. Yeah, and he got pole position in Saudi Arabia and had to give it away, obviously, because he then was going into F1. So maybe he would rather actually stay in F2, do as best as he can there, because he's kind of already proven himself. Good point. That's a very good point. Mm. I mean, he's a racing driver. I think he's going to be wanting to to be in the fastest car and, you know, really prove himself. But yeah, I think he might be right. Like, he might be thinking, I've done that now. Can I focus on my day job? Yeah. No, I mean, good point. Very good point. I didn't think about that. Let's talk about the next question. The big question. Who? 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 Let me move this image out of the way. Ah, oh, it's not working. Who is going to come out on top at Albert Park? Now, let's talk quickly about the track. Um, uh, it's not actually a track full time. It's a kind of hybrid of street race, right? And it gives it a very interesting uh, kind of level, level of features. Um, there's going to be a lot of evolution because there's not cars going around it all the time. There's going to be a lot of evolution. As well as that, there's a number of other racing, uh, other races going on. There's Formula Two, Formula Three, Porsche Carrera Cup, Australian Supercars. There's going to be lots of rubber going down on that tarmac over the over the race weekend. And to make things more difficult, Pirelli are changing the tyres that we're using this weekend as well. So they've, they've gone for the three softest compounds the softest of which has never been used uh, before um, on this track. So uh, it's going to be very interesting. We're expecting the normal kind of stuff. Start with the mediums, move on to the hards towards the end of the race. But this is Albert Park. There could be a safety car. We saw what happened or last three. year. <laughs> or three. That We saw what happened last year. It is a crazy, exciting, dangerous track, which always kind of throws something at you. Yes, it's not so exciting these days. It doesn't really suit these cars, but I think it could be really interesting. And having that soft available could add just a little spanner to the works of these strategies that the teams are going to be putting out. Um, there's four DRS zones. It's kind of difficult to overtake. It's not Monaco level. Again, it's not Monaco level with the with it being a street either, but it's very difficult to overtake. So we've got four DRS zones. So that's going to favor teams that have a more uh, powerful DRS, Red Bull maybe. I mean, the thing is, is we don't really know much. We assume Red Bull is going to be at the front. Um, we haven't actually seen their DRS in action yet. <laughs> Good point, yeah. Well, <laughs> they... <laughs> maybe a bit from Perez, but... Ouch. Yeah, I mean, like, we, really. don't, we don't really know because they've been at the front a lot. Um, and yeah, it's, expecting, it's expected to be a little cooler as well. So it's 5 a.m. in England, isn't it? Four, the race. Four. Four. Oh, it's going to be a long day that day. But yeah, it's going to be a little cooler. It's going to be a bit of wind. So things are going to happen and it's going to be really interesting. And I, I always really enjoy this race. Oh, same. I mean, last year was pure chaos. Was it three red flags? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Never never, perce never before seen at Albert Park, I think. Yeah. Three red flags. Really cool. It was madness. But it... It was really good to watch, but maybe for some of the wrong reasons. <laughs> yes. But it was it was a very, very, very good race. It's one of my favourites. But 
Max that's... won last year. He's obviously expected. Yeah, that's right. To win this year. Yeah, th- that is the question then, isn't it? Who is going to succeed at Albert Park? Now, like you said, kind of think Red Bull, mm. they're going to run away with it, I think. But behind them, we still haven't quite seen the performance of the teams in that kind of front middle section. So we've got Ferrari, which look like they're pretty much second uh, in, in, the, in the standings, um, in, in performance. And then McLaren, Mercedes, Aston Martin, they're all kind of bunched together, bunched around. And we don't really know. So um, Max is going to win, right? Yeah. I mean, unless, you know, Perez, we can't discount Perez. Also, he loves a street circuit. It's not, like you say, it's not your typical street circuit. And Max has won here previously. But Perez is obviously, on paper, the person that's most likely to threaten max if you want to put it that way but yeah saudi and bahrain they are two very different circuits so we haven't really seen a true representation of the car's pace yet um so i mean mercedes as well they're going into the weekend basically saying that our free practice sessions we're going to be trying loads of different things and experimenting and they still don't really know what's going on with the car so that doesn't give mercedes fans much hope yeah that's unbelievable three years in and they're still experimenting. It's worrying times for Mercedes. Yeah. So who knows what's going on there? That's difficult to predict. McLaren, it sounds silly, but there is something about being in front of your home crowd. And obviously Oscar Piastri is from Melbourne. Mm. So there is that bit of a push from the crowd. How Where much does, does that, that come actually to give you? Don't know. Mm. Not enough to threaten Red Bull I don't think obviously yeah yeah totally um Aston Martin Alonso did very well last year Mm, podium Um, last year yeah exactly but Aston Martin you know they they have kind of taken a bit of a step back in in the development war over the winter so I I think we're gonna see Red Bull at the top we're likely gonna see Ferrari the only way Ferrari is gonna win this I think is if they can qualify well because they've got to get ahead of Red Bull it's a difficult track to overtake. The issue is obviously four DRS zones. Red Bull are likely going to be able to utilize them. But if Charles Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, Oliver Bemmon, whoever it's going to be, if they can just hold off the Bulls for a little while, let their tires run down, degrade. You know, this is a, it's a track where degradation is something you've really got to think about. Mm. Um, we may be in for a pretty good race. And the Ferraris, they do qualify well. And we know that the Red Bulls are set up completely entirely for the race pace yeah so you know we'll we'll see what happens like you said mercedes we don't know where they are right now they've had issues in both races so far bahrain they had cooling issues so they couldn't utilize the car in saudi arabia they whacked a massive board on the back of the car and they had a load of drag um i say that they were pretty quick in saudi arabia but they just oh no sorry it wasn't the the drag was it that was mclaren it was the rear stability. Yes. They really struggled. And again, Albert Park has a lot of high-speed corners. They, they could, if they haven't understood their car, if the experiments go wrong, which Mercedes were kind of expecting them to go wrong now. <laughs> Ouch. Just because of experience. Um, they may really struggle. Um, but this is a kind of track where it's, it's, a, it's a nice varied track. So hopefully what we're going to see is actually a good representation, like you said. Uh, what we're missing currently, a good representation of the cars and their performances. Um, I think that's everything. I think we've got everything. Just looking at the notes here. Yeah, cool, cool. Let's move on to the last. Oh, there's been there's been a lot of drama, hasn't there? Let's move on to the last story. Susie Wolf. What what boss? What a boss? Uh, that's all I'm gonna say. Just like the admiration I have for that woman is. Kind of ridiculous. People are calling her mother. I get that. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen it, but I dig it. (laughs) Whatever you're into, guys. Mm. But anyway, so, I mean, it's all been kicking off off track, hasn't it? And we'll just add another thing in there. So going back towards the end of last year, the FIA announced that they were doing an investigation into Susie and Toto Wolf for allegedly talking you know passing information to each other that was confidential obviously with Susie Wolf being the F1 Academy managing director 
she reports directly to Formula One management, which no other team principal should have access to that information. The FIA said that they had received complaints from other teams, but then pretty soon after, every other team released the exact same announcement saying, we haven't said anything. Like word for word. Word for word. It's incredible. Saying, we fully support Susie Wolf, everything she's doing with the F1 Academy. We've not raised any complaints. It wasn't us. Even Red Bull were like, not me. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> Kristen's just checking, just making sure he hasn't sent a text. <laughs> So very quickly after that, the FIA was like, oh, we're dropping the investigation. Nothing's happening. Then we haven't really heard too much about it since, but we know that in the background, I mean, at the time, it sounded like both Susie and Toto were taking legal action separately. We haven't heard anything from Toto Wolf on this now. But yesterday, Susie confirmed to social media that she has filed a criminal lawsuit against the FIA in France. So the question is, <sighs> why? Why? Why in France? And, uh, sorry, I just I did just scroll past a load of quotes. Shall, shall we go through some quotes? Go for uh, it. This is what she said um, when she filed the criminal lawsuit against the FIA in France. She said, I can confirm that I have personally filed a criminal complaint in the French courts on the 4th of March in relation to the statements made about me by the FIA last December. There has still not been any transparency transparency, rather, or accountability in relation to the conduct of the FIA and its personnel in this matter. I feel more than ever it is important to stand up, call out improper behaviour and make sure people are held to account. Whilst some may think silence absolves them from responsibility, it does not. Wise words from <laughs> a brilliant person. Um, so yeah, the question is, why in France? And this is, this is the interesting bit, isn't it? Because it suddenly gets a little, a little serious. So the reason why, one, the FIA is based in France, mm -hmm. so it makes sense. But two, and more importantly, Defamation, which is what this is uh, uh, revolving around, is a criminal offence in France. And this makes what's happening actually incredibly serious. So what does Susie Wolf want from this? She wants an apology, first of all, because it seems like a weird... Like the investigation was launched within 24 hours or something stupid. It was launched mm. so quickly. Um which is crazy. She wants an apology for that. But then secondly, with all the teams saying, no, it wasn't me, she wants some sort of transparency about where this came from. Yeah. So will this lead to a criminal conviction? That's the second question. Um, Mohammed Ben Salem, he's been in a bit of turbulent water uh, over the last week, maybe. He's been under investigation for... Uh, last year's Saudi Arabian Grand Prix with Alonso and all sorts and there's obviously been a lot of drama surrounding the FIA and certain teams but will this actually come to fruition and uh, will, will, will Salaam or someone in the FIA or the FIA generally face a criminal conviction that is the question isn't it but I don't think I don't think, yeah, it's, that's the thing. You suddenly think this is actually quite serious. Yeah. I don't think it's actually this serious because what Susie wants is she's bending their arms backwards, isn't she? She's like, I'm going to take you to court. Mm. Shit's going down. Yeah. This could, la that's, this could lead to like some sort of criminal conviction and they're going, okay, we'll tell you everything. Yeah. And that's exactly what she wants. She doesn't care, I would assume, about criminal conviction she just wants to know she wants to force an apology and she wants to force transparency because look if someone is making allegations difficult with everything going on at the moment you kind of want to know who the allegations are from don't you as as the victim of the allegations yeah definitely especially as with what the fia was saying when very like when it came out mm. <laughs> words Sometimes they fail you. Yeah, they sure do. So when it first came out, I'm just going to start that again. The FIA made it quite clear that this was a complaint that had come from a team. So obviously, 
someone somewhere is not saying exactly where it came from and it is damaging claims like it's it's a damaging thing to say about somebody and the reputation and she's worked so hard to build her reputation up just for something like that to tear it down so she should go for it Mm. I mean I don't think it's going to go anywhere in terms of the criminal convictions but if she gets the answers and also just proves the point that that is not okay yeah those words didn't fail you I completely agree. Got there in the end. You did. You did. Words have been failing me all day because it is currently late. Um, But look, really excited for the Australian Grand Prix. This could be really good. We'll finally get to see, like, we've had a great first three races. I know they're kind of... It's only two so far. Yeah, but the first three races are very interesting tracks, very different tracks, very varied tracks. And you are entirely right. Maybe my words are failing me (laughs) once again. But um, look, this is going to be interesting. I think now we'll get a really good idea. Like I was saying, the first two races, we knew who, we, who was going to win. And it's looking like this may continue, at least for the time being, before the real development war comes. Imola, people are saying. Miami, that's when Ferrari, McLaren, a few other teams are starting to put some upgrades on their cars. But I think this could be a really interesting race coming up. Let's hope that no one gets hurt. Alpines, watch out for each other please. We don't want another, another example of what happened. I mean, you're going to be at the back, so don't worry about it. But try not to hurt each other. And uh, yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> Early mornings for us. Don't get stuck behind Magnussen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Charles, watch that first turn. Oh, don't. Okay. Charles, please. <laughs> Mate. <laughs> please. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. It's been a crazy, crazy video. We're very tired. Enjoy the race. See you in the next video.